All right, what do you guys usually do for spring cleaning? Like, what's spring cleaning look like for you? <laughs> Seriously, like, what is it? <laughs> maybe, maybe what was spring cleaning when you grew up? <laughs> Sweeping. Sweeping and what? Scrubbing. What is it? Blinds. Blinds, okay. Yeah, what else? Fans. Your fans, okay. Spring cleaning, right? What else? Anything else? Junk drawers. What about the, the mirrors, the windows and the mirrors? Windows. Yeah. Baseboards. Baseboards. Who did that? When I grew up, we had mirrors and like kind of like an angle along the, the, the ceiling. Don't ask me why. This is the pool room. But anyway, like mirrors on the side and then the, all the windows of the house. And that was, the, what did you guys use to clean your windows when you were younger? Windex. Hey, you're saying Windex. But what did newspaper. we really newspaper. used to use? Newspaper, newspaper and rum. <laughs> newspaper, rum. We used to use wow. newspaper, apple cider vinegar, right? Did anybody do that? Then you smell like a straight up salad when you're done. <laughs> and your neck hurts and you need to be adjusted because you're upside down like doing all that. So anyway, I say that to say like, obviously we're not doing enough spring cleaning in our own home. I hear that this whole group right here. But we've been a little, little preoccupied, yeah? Yes. We've been a little preoccupied. There's, got, there's some other trauma drama in our life that's mm -hmm. been going on this past year that's probably keeping us from spring cleaning. In fact, I would, I would say that this trauma drama of, let's just say, China virus season, right, has created so much toxicity in this, right, this body that we've been carrying around that there's going to be some work on spring cleaning and we might need to do some summer cleaning, right, and some fall cleaning too, right? So tonight we'll just kind of begin the process of what that looks like. And, and I want you to just make one promise to me, okay? I want you all to promise that you're not going to burn your house down. <laughs> just don't do that. Like you can't burn your house down because you got to live in it, right? But you can and don't burn this house down either because you got to live in it. And, and don't get so overwhelmed that you want, you're like, I can't, I'm not doing anything. This is all too much. Okay, can everybody promise me on that one? Rome was not built in a day. You are not going to fix what's been going on from one year of China virus. We're looking at a little bit more than a year, right? Mm -hmm. You're not going to fix that in one weekend of a liver gallbladder cleanse, but is a great start. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to unpack that a little bit here. Now, for the one guest that we have, um, and maybe just for a reminder for all the rest of you, Max Living is really the, the, the movement that we are a part of. And what they exist to do is they're all about being the standard, the standard of natural health care where everyone is empowered to live their full potential. Full potential. Now, the average, this is kind of where it gets a little dicey, okay? The average person could be exposed to 2,100,000 toxins a day. Wow. And what are, the, what are the places where we're finding toxins? Like, where are your big things where you're finding toxins? What do you think of when you think of toxins? So I hear cleaner. I see your cleaners. I hear air. What else? Food. Pesticides. Pesticides. That's a big one. Whether they're in your house or outside of the house, right? What else? You said water. You said gases. Tell me more about that, because that's kind of interesting. Things that they're spraying. Yeah. Okay. Good. Oh yeah. That's good. Anything else? What else? Cosmetics. That's right. Okay, it's not up on the screen. Give me something else. What else is toxic? <laughs> Metals, good. We're gonna play with that in a little bit here. Metals, emotions are toxic, right? I love this, this is good. Okay, say it, you said it, say it louder. Pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals. Hey, guys, is there a time? Sometimes there's a time that you need them, right? But does it make it not toxic just because you need it? No. no. So sometimes there's gonna be an emergency where you might need that to get over a particular crisis that you're in. However, you just need to recognize that if you're in that crisis, this is not necessarily some place you want to stay, right? And you want to get off um, as long as you have a coach and helping you through that process. You want to get off whatever that is that you're doing as soon as you can. Because in the end, it's not going to bring health for you. It might get you over a crisis, but it's not going to bring health for you, right? Anybody have anything else? I want you to give me a little bit more on that. Someone who, who's the first person going to tell me along the lines of pharmaceuticals. Give me a little more. Who said it? Say it. Vaccines. Vaccines. Y'all said it, I didn't. <laughs> okay. It's true, vaccines, right? 
And we probably could spend about five hours tonight and really unpack just that one subject. I'm not going to. That could be a private conversation for later. But that is definitely something, you know, we look at, we, we give patients the toxic ingredients list. We let you look through that. You want to make sure you know what's involved in all that stuff, so you make an informed decision. And we are in the state of Texas, so you do, you do still have the right to choose in the state of Texas not to do that, whether you put your kids in school, you go to college, work, you know, get your passport. Oh, we do have all those rights still right now. In Jesus' name, we will, re we will, we will retain those rights in Jesus' name, right? So those are all, I'm, I'm glad you, you started it. Good job. <laughs> so we want to hit that. Now, what are these toxins doing? Do you see that picture right there? We, I heard somebody say toxic emotions. But this is where you see the what? The headaches, the what else? What are some of the symptoms you guys know you're getting stomach because of fatigue. stomach ache, fatigue? I literally have patients that come in here that when I adjust them, I've been adjusting them for years. And in this past China virus year, their hands are so wrinkled up. You know, maybe a 28 year old female, hands are so wrinkled up. Why are they wrinkled up? From all the hand washing and the sanitizer, right? You, you guys, like, this is a 70-year-old hand that I touch now when I'm adjusting this patient. This stuff goes straight into your liver. When you put that on your body, it immediately soaks into your body and goes straight to your liver. Which is why liver gallbladder cleanse, right? Like, why that has been such an important piece. And, and I'll just say this, that toxic damage, for those of you, you might have heard me say this before, your, your brain is the thing, your brain and your nervous system is the thing your body will protect at all costs, okay? It's going to protect that organ, that system at all costs. So that means that if you've been exposed to all these toxins that we just talked about, what is going to show up on the scene to protect your nerve system? What is it? Inflammation. What shows up? Give me more. What wraps itself around a toxin to protect you? Fat. Do we like that? We just, she said fat, right? So fat shows up on the scene and wraps itself around your toxins that you've been exposed to, which we just heard that was like 2,100,000, right? Fat shows up on the scene. Now let me just be honest, how many of us have found that we've put on the quarantine 15? Mm -hmm. Only me? Nobody, else, do you know what the quarantine 15 is? Who knows what the freshman 15 is? All right, now raise your hand. Who had the quarantine 15 in this past little season, right? I have, I know I have. Toxins come in, your body wraps itself around those fat cells, wrap itself around those toxins to protect your nerve system. And yes, am I mad about that? Yes, but thank God that the system that he made comes on the scene to protect you, right, in that way. So now it's our job to do what? Pull this stuff out, right? Because we don't need it anymore, right? We, we don't need it anymore. And also, it's our job to make sure that we are wise consumers, that we're paying attention to, our eyes are open, our ears are open, our hearts are open, and we're starting to look at recipes. And, and I got a list of things over here. Yes, I do have sanitizer. This is not, this is my toxic side, okay? And so I do have this sanitizer, and, and, I'll, and I'll just show you like the main ingredient on here that's toxic is gonna be like your triclosan. You guys have heard of triclosan? That's the thing that goes right into your liver. So I do have these over here, and it's not to judge, this isn't judgment time, this isn't like naughty you. This is empower you so that you can go home, make better choices, you can clean out the crap, restore it with the good stuff, empower your family members to do the same thing like that's what we're all going to do together yes amen okay um another important stat just to remember because i just talked to you about all these toxins right your nerve system is the piece that's going to be that we want to protect at all costs but did you know and i want this to empower you did you know that 95 percent of all cancer is attributed to diet and toxins wow. so if you know that 95 percent of cancers out there are attributed to diet and diet and toxins does that make you feel less of a victim more empowered yes because that means a lot of this guys is in your control you can do something to change it if you have a family member that maybe was diagnosed with with cancer right a lot of times what we start thinking about is we start thinking about genetics yes 
And so I want you to, for those of you who are on the genetic kind of, maybe you have a stronghold that the genetic piece is like, you know, whispering in your ear, the genetic devil, I'll just say it like that, is whispering in your ear. Pick up the book Biology of Belief by Bruce Lipton. And he talks about how genes load the gun. Genes. So you all have genes, right? And those genes load the gun. But it's lifestyle, or lack of five essentials, which is what we teach, it's lifestyle that pulls the trigger. So if your lifestyle of doing some of the things that we teach, you know, not correctly, right, that we're all learning about, right? If your lifestyle pulls that trigger, then on the other side, what do you manifest? Cancer. You manifest the cancer or whatever the other genetic disease is, right? So what I want you to learn from this is that 95% of all cancer is attributed to diet and toxins. This is in our power. We can do something about this to prevent. And let's say we've already had it, then we keep us from having it again, okay? So we want to do a whole lot of different things if we've had it so that we never have to have it again. We don't want to like follow the statistics where it's like, well, five years, you know, the five year mark is, we don't want to follow those statistics. We don't want to do what everybody else has done. We want to do something different. Make sense? Okay. Now we're going to exit conventional. So you can kind of see a theme throughout today. We're going to exit conventional. What does that mean? We're exiting what everybody's been telling us to do. Like we're not following the same path that everybody else is following. We're going to take a different route. So when you think about exiting conventional, what are some of the words that you think of that's non-conventional? Non-GMO. Non-GMO, that's a good one. What else? Organic. Organic or certified organic, right? And then really, like for as far as products are concerned, there's, there's a whole long list of things that you just have to look at the list and go, okay, yeah, that one's bad, that one's bad. And we give that out of the five essentials equipping class. So do you, that's one of those things I feel like you want to keep that handy in your house. If you don't remember that you know that you have or where it is, get that at the front desk. So just kind of keep that as you start working through your personal care products and you start working through your um, pantry. And you know what I mean? Like you start switching stuff out. Not burn your house down, but you start switching stuff out. You're exiting conventional. And we really want to expose those top toxins. And so I'm going to hit the first one that's just super easy for all of us to kind of address, right? This one. Kind of a fun one to unpack a little bit, but think about how easy this is to change, right? So the first one, this is a really cool um, description. It talks about one hour, what happens to your body in one hour after drinking Coke. Wow. Okay, so let's just pick through this a little bit. First minutes, 10 teaspoons of sugar hits your system 100% daily intake. 100% of your daily intake, okay? And then at 20 minutes, your blood sugar spikes, and this one is really nasty, y'all. Your blood sugar spikes and your liver turns the excess sugar into what? Dang! And now, if you think that you're gonna get away with it by doing diet, you're not. You actually then are burning a hole in your brain, so now you got two things working against you, so. And then 40 minutes, caffeine absorption is complete, okay? So you got your caffeine in. Blood pressure rises. So for those of you taking blood pressure medication, look at there's one simple solution. Do what? No, Cut out the sodas, right? Yeah. Then you save money on the blood pressure medication. You save money on the on the <coughs> gaining weight, right? Like solution, easy solution, right there. And what could you replace this with? What product do they sell that you could replace Zevia. this with? Zevia. There's a cola, Zevia. No, it doesn't taste like Coke. <laughs> But it's a replacement, okay? It's a great replacement. It's not going to harm you. Um, um, ups your dopamine at 45 and then, ex and then at 60 and after, excreting of calcium, magnesium, zinc intended for your bones. Well, dang, now I just lost all my minerals. <laughs> and what, what minerals do we need right now in China virus season? Like zinc is kind of important, right? So can you see how we're like hurting ourselves just from doing that? And the sugar crash leaving you irritable and sluggish. See that? Look, no wonder everybody's so moody, right? Ooh, you go through that wave of emotions right there. Now, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just kind of delivering what, you know. But again, this is the first really easy step. Cleaners. So a couple really good companies out there that I love cleaners um, that work really good. And you're going to have to take your time. Like, go through your, your cleaning cleaners. Go through your laundry. Go through your, 
your um, dishwasher, go through your soaps that you put in your bathrooms, go through, you know what I mean? Like go through all that stuff and then just transfer it. Okay, transfer it with all your cleaners. Somebody said Windex. Well, there's some great stuff you can do to clean your windows that are all natural. I love Young Living. They have an entire um, line of uh, thieves, like a thieves cleaning line. And I love Norwex. So those are my two favorite things. And if you, you, you might pick some from one, some from the other, you might have both. But I just think those are two great resources. There are also some products that are at Sprouts and Natural Grocers that you have to be wise and like make sure you're looking at the ingredients and again, get that list. So those are kind of places that you can look through, but cleaners are, like you ever walk through a cleaning aisle in the grocery store and you get a headache like immediately? Am I the only one? Like, like immediately I have a headache, right? So you wanna stay away from that stuff. That's the picture that you saw the girl just like, ugh. Like, I'm super sensitive to that stuff. And let me, let me tell you how I know that I'm super sensitive. So I did a testing, which I'll show you guys about in a little bit. Who knows about metabolics testing? So I did a testing, and I was healing myself from leaky gut, and it was March. China virus hits, I retake in April, and I never had toxicity and off the charts toxicity in April. Now, the only thing, only places I'm around toxins are outside of my like anywhere I go that's not my home and my offices. And so I realize way, I'm way, way sensitive to this and I work hard at this. Like I already work super hard at this. I go into the CrossFit gym and you know when you were going to the gym, everything you touch you spray. So every set, you know, I put the weight down then I'm gonna go get the kettlebell and they spray it and then you get the, right? You're, you're constantly having to spray everything and so I'm sitting here doing my weights and I'm like, everyone's spraying. And so it's like you got a headache just coming in the door. The mats you're laying on have been bleached and sprayed. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's soaking into your skin everywhere, yeah. right? And so this is the kind of stuff, like you don't wanna spray your countertop with bleach and put a sandwich on it, which none of us are eating bread, right? <laughs> anyway, you don't wanna put, right? And then make your kid a sandwich and then, and then have your kid eat that. Like that's, so this is why we really wanna pay attention to the cleaners. It'll go a really long way. The disinfectants, not only just the fragrances, the colors, but look, look up those two words, propylene glycol and triclosan. They have a great sanitizer with Young Living. So if you absolutely have to have a sanitizer, you wanna put that, like I have Zanae, my, my 11 year old, it's in her backpack. So if someone tries to force or strongly encourage my 11 year old, she'll just get her own you know, young living sanitizer out of her bag, and that doesn't have any of that stuff on it, okay? So you just wanna like, there's also some things out there you can make your own, which, you know, can be cumbersome, but at least there's some stuff out there that can protect you. So look at those two um, very, very toxic poisons and just pay attention to that. And those are two ingredients you might find in other products too. Okay, so just a couple, couple things on your list of things. Now, if you want to, you can take your camera and just kind of put your camera up. This is Environmental Working Group. And Environmental Working Group has a list of like cleaners and disinfectants. And it's a great way to like kind of get some more resources at home. And so you just take, this is a QR code. You just take your phone and you just take your camera. And as, as soon as your camera sees it, it'll automatically bring up the Environmental Working Group. And that's just a fantastic resource for you to have, and I'll show you another one here, but this one's gonna be for cleaners and dis disinfectants, okay? Very good? Now, we said heavy metals, right? You said heavy metals. So heavy metals, where, um, if we think of a metal, heavy metals, what heavy metals do you guys think of that are toxic? Like what? Mercury. Okay, mercury, anybody have anything else? Lead. 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 Aluminum. Aluminum. I think we hit the, the big ones, right? So your big ones are going to be silver fillings, vaccines. Um, they tell you that they're not in there, it's a lie. They're in there, okay? And the other one, um, we hit fish, is, is a big one. So you wanna be careful of where you're sourcing your fish and um, make sure you're getting the right kind, okay? So that's it. Now if you get mercury toxicity, you can see up here just a list of the symptoms definitely cancer, reproductive, de definitely nerve damage, headaches, lung, all that kind of stuff. 
There are so many symptoms that go along with it. And I'm a neurotoxicity, I'm certified in neurotoxicity expert. And so it is a process that you go through to get this stuff out of your system. So we said, let's see, mercury, we said lead. Where do you get lead from? Paint. Paint, what else? Somebody say water. water. Water, like old pipes. Mm -hmm. Old homes, and old pipes, right? And so you're seeing it in, in that. And um, what country has a lot of lead? China. So you have to be careful. You don't want to buy toys and have your kid putting toys in their mouth. Then they're getting lead by just chewing on, you know, kids chew on their toys and stuff, right? So be careful where you're getting your sourcing stuff from because there's lead in nearly everything that comes back from China, okay? And then the third one we said was aluminum. Well, let me stop before I go to the go to the third one. Where does lead like to hang out? This is maybe a new one for you guys. Where does it love to hang out? In your bones. Mm -hmm. Okay, so follow me on this train of thought, which is a whole other talk. I'm not gonna go too deep, but I just wanna follow me on this. If it loves your bones, what, what is your body, what are your bones really important for? Like what happens inside the bones? Blood. So if you think about people who have things that are disorders that were related to blood, iron, anemia, all these, think of disorders that are related to blood, there is a great chance, a very large chance, that they have what kind of toxicity? Lead. Lead. Which is why we do something called a urine, a heavy metal urine challenge. And when we challenge the body, we force the lead in the, out and we can test it to see how much is there and that way I can tell you how long it's gonna take to get out of your system. And I can walk you through the process of doing that. Third one, you can't burn your house down. Remember what I said? I know I'm getting this kind of, some of this is heavy, so hang in there. But there are all solutions. I've seen all these things heal. Hang in there. The third one is what? Aluminum. We said aluminum. So where are we getting aluminum from? Deodorants. Deodorants, right? So you want to make sure that you're looking at your deodorants and it has no aluminum in it. And it's crazy to me, you're putting a deodorant where? Like on your armpits, which is closest to your what? And then hello, kind of can't. System, y'all, we're feeding the system, right? No more of that. We're not feeding that system anymore. So aluminum also is found in what else? Okay, pots and pans. Give me another one. Go back to what you said a minute ago. Vaccines. Big time in vaccines. Yep. Big time in vaccines. Pharmaceutical drugs, absolutely. And water, absolutely. And then really like a lot of like the, the, the cans and stuff that you eat, I just want to be careful of that kind of stuff. All right, cosmetics. Somebody said cosmetics. Okay. So I have a little, you can do the QR code for this. This is a little QR code on cosmetics. You can find some good resources for cosmetics. For those of us women who um, want to try new stuff, sometimes the frustration is it just doesn't quite work. So you want to kind of try a few. Do you understand what I mean by work, ladies? You know, you put the makeup on, and it's like, well, that didn't even, that just didn't even stay. That was the speed of the purpose. Remember, what we're going to do is, like our fifth essential is to minimize toxins. We are never going to eliminate them. We don't. We did not until we get to heaven, right? None of that's there. So we're never going to eliminate it. What our job is to do is we don't want to be in the 95% range for cancer. So our job is to, to minimize everything and just be very awake and aware of what's going on with toxins in our food and our environment. This is a big one. Someone said pans a second ago. Yes, pans have nasty toxins in them. They have been banned all over, the, all over, the, all over Europe, all over the world. But when you come to America, we are literally poisoning ourselves. But this particular toxin can give us a ton of symptoms. It's also found in the what? The masks. I'm sorry. Don't kill the messenger. It's found in the masks. And so we did this at the makeover. We talked about a lot of the stuff in the, in the makeover about the masks and stuff. So just know that there are, in, it's in many of the, the disposable face masks. I don't see any. Ones in here, so. um, 
But these pans that we're using, so think about it. If you take a pan, you know, the, the conventional pan that I think we've all used probably, and we um, are heating up food in this pan, we're cooking up the food, so we're cooking up some eggs. What we're doing is that meal that we just had, we now put P, T, F, E in our eggs, right? And then we just ate those eggs, mm -hmm. yeah? And so then what, are, what is gonna be protected at all cost? Our nerve system. And so then that, what we thought was supposed to be so good for us, caused our body to go alert, alert, bring on the fat, wrap it around, because we had too many. And now that's why so many of us are carrying so much weight because we are doing things all, like I just gave a list of so many things, and knowingly and not knowingly, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of it's not knowing, we just don't even know, which is why you come to workshops like this, to just help you with this. Now I have a company that I like to work with, and um, they're called Salad Master. How many of you have ever, have worked with Salad Do you have Salad Master pans? How many of you have Salad Master pans? So a lot of you, but for those of you who don't, I have some, Summer or somebody, I have business cards. I'll leave them right here. You can have um, Vera will come to your house and she'll cook for you and she'll test your pans. I, I, I'm that person that needed to be, and you needed to prove it to me. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of put her off for a little while. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I bought all my, can my pans from Mercola. I know they're good. I did the whole attitude thing. I know they're all good. And every single pan that I bought from Mercola was all toxic. And so I was super bummed because I spent quite a penny, right, on all these pans. But then it was a real eye-opening experience for me. In fact, as soon as I started cooking with my Salad Master pans, my husband could instantly tell a difference in just the taste of the food. And so this is a place where you can avoid things like Alzheimer's, right, because all that some of the copper and the aluminum and the things like that in the pans, you're just collecting it in your brain, okay? So this is a place where you can avoid a lot of those things, okay? So get some, get some pans and I'll have, um, Paulina, can you just grab those cards on my desk and just sit them right here? Thank you, Paulina. Um, microplastics, another place, right? So this is really just a reminder that when you take your hot meal and you wanna just put it away in the fridge, you don't want to put your hot meal in plastic. You guys know why? Because that plastic will put off a toxin called phthalate. P-T-H, it's a weird spelling. P-T-H, phthalates. And that, those phthalates get into the food and then we consume the food. Now phthalates are also very prevalent in the water supply. Uh, I have quite a few staff members that live in areas that, uh, like I think Frisco has a really high phthalate concentration in it. So there's quite a few issues, and it's always a good idea to kind of like get a pull from wherever you're getting your water from and just find out what's in the normal drinking water in the area. But get to, get to glass if you can. That would be better. Um, but if you did have plastics, just make sure your food is not hot before you put it in there. Um, and I, again, I would rather you guys have things like um, glass to put your stuff in. That's much better. Now water, um, thanks Paulina. Water, um, here's the thing about us drinking, who's, who's still drinking tap water? Nobody wants to say anything, probably. Mm -hmm. Tap water. Okay, so the tap water we want to stay away from, so we want to look for things like uh, maybe an on-the-counter, if you're in an apartment, like, or other under-the-counter water filter. They have a lot of those. You have Walmart, Costco, you can find those around. And get those little water units to take out all the, you know, the, the bad stuff, the fluoride that's in your water, or they... You know, you want to take out the chlorine. You want to take all that stuff out of your water. And, and if, you, if you are living in a home, then you want to invest in and put it on your wish list and save up for, if budget's an issue, to getting a whole house unit. Because every time you bathe your child or you bathe yourself or you stand in the shower, you're actually, you know, you're getting about 15 gallons of water that when you dilate, let's say a shower, you dilate the blood vessels in your skull right so because the heat hits your hits your body and when you your, the heat hits your body it causes the blood vessels to open so when they're open then what you're doing is you're pouring in fluoride you're pouring in chlorine you're pouring in somebody else's medications because every time you take medications it flushes it down the toilet they recirculate and that and you get it you guys get that 
It's kind of gross, but it's so true. But it's true. So you want to look at getting a whole house system. That's going to be the way to go on that. And just, you know, take your steps toward watching what you're putting in your body. Get a, get a house unit. Get something for your shower. You know, they do have shower units. You can get those as well where you, where you um, can attach it for your shower or attach it to your under the sink. You can begin there. But just I would really recommend that we move in the direction of, of people getting the whole house. You know, it's going to protect your family. Um, yep, toxins in your food right we got the whole msg the aspartame aspartame a lot of us know that name yes, yes. they actually changed the name did you guys know that no so who, who made aspartame does anybody know mon okay but monsanto yes 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 but monsanto right and the same company who actually has made roundup great company right so they made that, and um, they changed the name. Because if you change the name, then people won't know, right? We can be fooled, but they're, they don't know that they're messing. They're not, they don't know who they're messing with, this crowd right here. So the new name is Amino Sweet. Wow. Amino wow. Sweet. So if you are buying, like, flavored waters and things like that, and the new name is Amino Sweet, that's really aspartame. Just like it sounds. Yeah, Amino Sweet. So we want to be careful of anything that those guys make. There's like a billion dollars of big lawsuits out that are going on, and they're being paid for the Roundup and things like that. Um, but they're still making it, so they must be making a ton of money off of it, right? So it's not discouraged from that. Who does? Um, who who knows about regenerative farming? May know about regenerative farming? We have a patient in our office. I want her us to kind of do a class together but she's really diving into that she's actually a rocket scientist and this is something that she's decided to start diving into doing is regenerative farming and so we had a workshop that we did this um, past year and she came and everybody started doing a little bit at a time just a little bit of growing little things here and there farming is really the way to go it's really healing our land and guys we're gonna have to do a lot of work to heal our land yes mm -hmm. We have a lot, there's, this is going to be, I mean, I, oh, I tried gardening and my husband makes fun of me. He's like, the only thing you grew was a radish and it was like skinny and dehydrated. <laughs> and so I, I, it's an area that I I'm obviously suck at. So I need some help in that area. And so I think this is going to be something that will be really good to, you know, I don't know how many of you had a garden when you grew up, but I had a garden growing up and I, I don't remember it ever being hard. It's harder now. And so the soil and all the stuff that they've depleted from the soil and everything, it's going to be a work to where we can count on when we eat, you know, an orange, we don't actually have to eat 30 of them to get the same nutrients that we would for one orange. Wow. That's what it is now, you know. So that's really what, we're, what, we wanna, what we wanna get back to. It's, we're gonna have a lot, again, like I said, a lot of work to heal our land. And I think it's gonna take all of us to really figure some things out and dive in. And, and we'll be the first to have classes to, to learn about this. But I can tell you, I, I'm not good at it. I'm gonna get good at it, right? Toxic bioaccumulation. You know, if you've got 100 people, they're all taking medication and they go to the bathroom, you know, all that medication goes goes in, right? The treatment plants, all they're doing is putting chlorine, chlorine and fluoride in the water. They're not filtering out all that medication. So this is the toxic bioaccumulation. You start to see it's totally changed. It's not even water anymore, right? So that's why we have to take an extra step in filtering our own stuff to taking out the medication and taking out the fluoride and taking out all that stuff to make sure to protect ourselves. Because again, the body's gonna protect its nerve system at all costs. And so what we're doing is we're finding ourselves getting heavier and heavier and our hormones are more trash and more, more of us have brain fog than ever. We have more diagnosis of more diseases than we've ever, ever had. And so because of all these things that are happening in the world that a lot of us aren't aware of. And so it's gonna be our job to really work on this stuff. Um, and it's not fair, but that's just the way it is, and life isn't fair, you know? So um, some of us, are to our supplements are toxic. I have this conversation with my mom all the time. My mom's in Michigan, and she goes to see the chiropractor that are like my chiropractic parents. And um, 
when she started, before she moved back and she started going and she's like, Mom, she's like, Kimberly, I get these GNC coupons all the time. I'm like, Mom, no. My company tests GNC and prints off a big long list of all the toxins in their products. So no, don't do that. So you just, you know, sometimes we're actually buying products that are, we think are cheaper, you know, saving us money, but we're not really looking at the ingredients in the bottom that say, you know, it, it'll say amino sweet, it'll have sugar in it, sucralose, soy, it'll have um, bad oils, it's also going to have these colors and the additives and things like that, like, it's like, yeah, but I take, I take these little teddy bear vitamins. <laughs> right? And I chewed the little teddy bears. But they have like blue number whatever and yellow number whatever and red number, right? But I take my vitamins. Okay, we're going to stay away from that. So let's get it closest to the natural form, right? We want to get everything closest to the natural form as possible. One thing that I love about our company is we, we actually have a lab in Las Vegas where we, we test our stuff and we test everybody else's stuff too. So we know who on the market we know about Costco and Garden of Life and all the ones that you kind of can think of. We know about their products. And so it's important they're GMP certified. It's important that they're, that they're registered and that they're NSF certified. It's important that they're GMO free. It's important that they're gluten free and they're, you know, and they're, they're grass fed and finished, right? It's important. But what that means, and the other thing that's important to know is that vitamins in general don't have really any standards. Like you can make vitamins in your garage. Mm -hmm and sell them. So there's, there's no standards, which is why it's going to cost a little more to get the good stuff because the cheap stuff is active ingredients, but it's got a lot of fillers and all the other bad stuff in it. So it's kind of like food, isn't it? Same mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, it's a little more like food that way. There's two products that are cleanse products. So kind of depending upon where you're at, I am still taking the detox system. I have also, I took a break on detox and I tried the Max Cleanse. I like them both. I'm back on the detox system. I think it's kind of like if you're that person that's like, I need something simple, a little gentler Max Cleanse. If you're the person that's like, let's get her done, that's going to be your detox system. That's really the best way I can describe it. I'm going to show you a couple images right here of the cell, like what happens when we fill up with toxins. These are really powerful images. It's called the toxic bucket theory and the, and of health and, and disease. So think about it. If you've been exposed to like all the toxins we've just been talking about, right? Mm -hmm. China virus year hit us with more than we would like to have, right? And so if your bucket is able to, because your liver is your detox organ, so if your bucket is able to take stuff in, you've breathed it in, you put it on your skin, and your bucket is just slightly like maybe a third full, then what happens is you're able to poop and pee out the toxin or breathe it off. You're able to get it out and, you're, and you remain healthy. That's the way the system is set up. If your bucket starts to get too full, i.e. you're starting to use that triclosan sanitizer all the time, someone's got this, you know, swisher thing that puts, what is that called where they, the smell good things, what are those? I put those in the, in your, Glades. yes, Gla air, is that what it is? Glade. glade. The glade, and then someone's bleaching all the countertops at work, and every handle that you touch the workplace has been bleached down. Like, if that's your place, in this past year, like most of us, then what's happened is your bucket starts to fill up. This is when I never had allergies before, but now I'm starting to have allergies. Wow. It's not Texas, I promise you. <laughs> it's not. It's because your bucket is starting to fill up. And if you backtrack and think about, well, somebody sprayed my house for bugs. I told my husband not to do that. And he sprayed my house for bugs. He saw one cockroach and he decided to bring in all the poison. And then you go to work and then you go to the gym. Do you see how the bucket starts to fill up? Then you go through a period of time and maybe you're, you have a little harder time detoxing, right? You're a little more sensitive to stuff. And pretty soon what happens is the bucket is so full, it's spilling. So if your cells are like buckets and they start to spill, then what happens is that's when you start to have the chronic stress, the processed foods, the overuse of antibiotics, the pathogens, environmental toxins, all this stuff. This is where the food sensitivities come in. I was never allergic to strawberries, but now I'm allergic to strawberries. 
Wow. I, you know, everybody in my class is allergic to peanuts. Everybody, and that's a whole other story too, actually, that kind of, I can take you down a little rabbit trail with the peanut thing, but think about all that stuff. And then all of a sudden, this is where the allergies or skin issues, or this is where the bucket starts to become overflowed. And now we've got skin issues or we've got hormone issues. Or we can't seem to lose weight. You guys with me? Mm -hmm. So this is the toxic bucket theory. So the process of detoxification is really important for us to understand and be encouraged by. If you guys can see this picture, so what happens is the toxins will come in. So what did we say? We're putting them on our skin, knowingly or unknowingly or forced to, right? We're putting them on our hand, right? We're breathing them in, right? All these toxic smells, we're bringing all this stuff in. We're swallowing it, we're drinking it, okay? So what happens is the toxins will come in and it goes through a couple different pathways, lung, skin, intestines, right? That's what we just said. The organ that needs to pump it is the liver. Mm. That's the reason why I just talked to you about the liver gallbladder cleanse because most of us have a what? A clogged up liver, right? Mm -hmm. So the liver, the job of that liver is, to, is the primary detox organ. And then it exits through skin, so you sweat. So some of you, when you go through detoxes, you, your, your sweat smells really bad, right? That's the toxins coming out. That's, a good, that's good news, right? It also goes through the kidneys. So sometimes your pee smells strong or bad, right? Mm -hmm. Toxins are coming out through the kidneys. Mm -hmm. They also come through the colon. That's why when, when I hear that someone is constipated, I say that's an emergency. You guys see why I say that's an emergency? Mm -hmm. Because if you're constipated, where's that poop going? Yeah. It's going back through the body. Mm -hmm. And this is why you see fibroids and masses and melanomas and tumors pop up. Because it's got to get out some way. Yeah. Wow. Okay? Wow. Very important that your bowels are moving. And then lungs. We just went through a whole season of the whole lung stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But think about it. If this isn't working, then it's going to make a weakness in this stuff, right? So that's the way the body should be. Now, this stuff has these toxins they like to hang out and they have an affinity for. Fat cells, which we just talked about, right? Bone marrow, liver, and your nerve system and your brain. I just showed you guys all that, right? It also has an affinity for your joints, your blood, your <coughs> tissues, and your muscles. So for those of you who are like, man, my joints, we just got to get that liver clear. We got to remove all the sources, right? We got to remove all that we got, as many sources as we can. We can't move them all. But we, as many sources as we can, we got to start removing those sources so that we can minimize the toxins and we can have to ha actually help heal. Is this helpful? Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions about this? You guys good? Okay. All right, this is also why we do testing. If you guys have never tested before, this is one of the most powerful tools that I've seen to, to me, not guess. Takes the guess right out of what's going on with you personally, and this will tell you exactly what you should be eating. Yeah, not eating. And also, it's funny, there's nowhere to hide I can tell what you've been eating. So if you're like, yeah, I follow the advance plan, I'm like, no, you're not. I can see it on this test. <laughs> But that's really what helped me. Like, I, I do this, my family, we test her. Daughter, when um, is 11 now, her first test was at three. And so when I tested her, I, I tested my entire family on, in, on one day, which is kind of funny, because you got to collect a sample of your urine and you got to collect a sample of your blood. So there's these little lancets, you poke your finger and it's kind of like you're taking a little sample, little drops of blood. But the urine was funny because it was like, don't go pee, keep the toilet seat down. You know, because you're kind of collecting urine. And so all of us did our tests in the same day. So when we sent all of our tests off, back, and all five of us come back, and we're all different. All our test results are different. What was interesting is my three-year-old had a cancer marker. Wow. So there's a cancer marker in there. And there's also toxicity markers. And her toxicity marker told me that she had been exposed to pesticides. And I was like, well, that didn't happen in my house. So guess where she's different than where my house or my office is? She's in research, you know, did the mama thing, casually. I went into school and I, and I walk around and I'm like, oh, I see the guy in the little hazmat suit and he's walking around with the big long thing and he's, you know, doing the classroom where my daughter takes a nap on a mat every day in that classroom. Oh my goodness. 
So after a little discussion about that one, we just took her out of school because that wasn't going to change. But what I did was I put her on this product called the detox system. So this is what we talked about just a second ago. She was three years old and learned to swallow capsules. Wow. I sat her in a class and I told her what was going on. I showed her, her test results. She learned, she, she goes, I go, Zanae, what do you think? She goes, my body's not doing really good. I'm like, no, it's not. And so literally that day, because she knew why, she went home, learned how to swallow capsules that day. Kids are smart. You just got to give them the reason. You just got to give them why. And so what the encouraging piece about was when I retested her, because I told you she had the cancer marker. That doesn't make anybody kind of, whoo, okay, we're going to do something. And the pesticide marker. I retested her in three months, all gone. Wow. And I've been testing her every year. I've had a ton of tests. And I just tested her probably about three months ago, maybe. Still gone. And what's cool is you find out what you need to do to heal. Then you heal it. And then you just every year you maintain it. And I just retested my husband and my 11-year-old. And there was, there was one change that needed to happen. My 11-year-old needed different fatty acids. Well, she's in the pre-teen stage, so she knew a little different fatty acids. And my husband needed a little more of the, some, a one fatty acid. But everything he had been doing, his test showed he was still healed, still good. So that's encouraging. It just makes you go, all right, we're doing things in the right. You know, of course, mine came back. I had chronic toxicity, but, you know, that way I knew. If I didn't know, then I wouldn't know what changes to be able to make. So anyway, that's a, that's a really powerful test. I'm going to tell you one more testimony. I'm, I'm going to share the live testimony for June. We're going to do this live testimony. But I just met with a patient a couple, couple days ago, or Friday it was. And she got her test done. She was in a walker, and she has a progressive neurological disorder that is incurable. Mm. And... Um, a lot of symptoms, body doesn't really want to cooperate with her and do, do what it's supposed to do. And so we started her on chiropractic care, and she's gotten a lot better with chiropractic care. So she's kind of still in a walker, moving a little faster with the walker. And she starts the metabolics, adds that, you know, that essential to, to her process. She starts the metabolics, and dramatic improvement to the point where no walker anymore. No longer has the walker. She goes, oh, and I lost 20 pounds. I'm like, oh, okay, well, there you go. That was another. But this thing that she had been identifying with, do you know what I mean by identify? Like mm -hmm. somebody tells you you have this mm -hmm. diagnosis and you just, you talk, you walk around and you say, my, yeah. in front of the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to some people, I think. Mm -hmm. My, this is my nothing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. My Jesus. That's what you got right there. Okay. <laughs> So she goes around and she, that piece was going on. Now we, now we don't do that anymore. It's like, I'm healed in Jesus' name, and she's just walking it out. She's walking out her healing. But she was showing off the other day in the office. I was like, wait. And two of my patients came in with no walkers. They were both showing off. It was pretty cool. <laughs> but this is the kind of stuff like this, you know, that you're told you could never heal. This is something that is a game changer. In fact, it's, it's sort of like a... A way to say, don't ever tell me that I'm not going to heal from this. Don't ever, don't ever do that again. Don't you don't you don't get to give me a, a diagnosis and curse me, right? Because my body will heal in Jesus' name. Period. Um, gallstones, they don't look that clean, but they but they do look like that. So when you do do the gallbladder cleanse, that what what some people have done is they put little strings on their toilet if you really want if you're kind of gross and you want to see it I'm kind of gross I like to see that kind of stuff but you can see the stones and that patient like 300 stones you can see them amazing cool thing to know that now you can keep your gallbladder we've had several patients I mean I probably a hundred patients in this years not have to have their gallbladder removed we saved the gallbladders and your gallbladder is the organ that breaks down fat you guys know that. Yeah. So if you take it out now, it's like, what do you have to break down the fat? Super important to have that organ, gallbladder. Anyway, so that's the test. This is the kit. I think I only have maybe 15 of these kits. So if you guys want one, just grab one. But um, 
you can we'll, we'll order some more you'll have some more coming can you take that in combination with the detox yeah absolutely i think that it's best to follow because it'll tell you what to do and it's literally like one day ish about one day and if you pick the weekend to do it then you just rest and you just go back to work monday and there's no issue but I would follow exactly what it says on here as far as what supplements and whatever, that kind of stuff. Yeah, just follow exactly what it says on there. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, I've gone to work doing a cleanse, but don't do what I do. I mean, it's not like painful. It's not going to make you sick or anything like that. But you just watch yourself. I mean, just kind of watch how you feel, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yep. All right. Who's got this? Not me. <laughs> no, let me just tell you guys, does everybody know that we're going through a flood in Capel? I mean, hello, y'all know, because this isn't your normal home, <laughs> right? Uh, this has been a total challenge to my, um, um, it's been a challenge, right? But I just keep telling people that, you know, I feel like I've been punched in the nose a few times, but I'm still standing. And so I'm just claiming you know that and I think that this is just really important the whole process of like exiting exit conventional detoxing your mind I love this quote it's so powerful I love this quote this guy is the co-founder he's the president and co-founder of the Center for Humane Technology and formal Google design mm. <laughs> ethicist it's like a oxymoron. right <laughs> it's, it is so he says it's not about the technology being the existential threat it's the technology's ability to bring out the worst in society and then the worst in society being the existential threat. Isn't that so true? It's like the mind molding that goes on, right? Yes. From, you know, mainstream media and all that stuff and technology. But I think that's really good. And sometimes you just have, sometimes you have to identify what is the tiger that's in your home? What's the tiger that's in your bedroom? And go, no more tiger in my bedroom. Do you guys get what I'm saying? What is the tiger in your life? Like, what is that? And just no more of that. If you're that person that is not sweating, I remember a person here that was not sweating at one period of time. And what I make you do? What I make you do because you weren't sweating? Exercise. Exercise what? How? How? Hard. Hard. Yes. She didn't like me for that. In the moment. But if if you find that you're exercising and you're not sweating then you're probably not exercising what? Right. Hard enough, right? Or long enough, or whatever that is. And did you know that too? Did I tell you about that too? Yeah. I'm talking to myself too. Like I, I know, I understand, but you're not gonna release it without it. So health equals 100% function. And what is the organ that controls all function and healing? Brain and nerve system. So if you're having symptoms, Right? If you're having symptoms, like any of those symptoms, those, those are warning symptoms. So this is for our guest and really a nice reminder for all the rest of us, yes? If you're having symptoms, it's warning symptoms, warning signs to let us know that there's something going on, you know, some sort of interference to the nerves and your body's ability to heal. So this is a, it's a nice reminder for us to go like, let's make sure we're getting our adjustments, right? Clear the nerve supply. Let's make sure we're doing our rehab and if we kind of got off track, get back on track. If you don't know how to get back on track, that's why you ask. Mm -hmm. If you feel stupid, don't. Like, the team does it too. So just, just getting yourself back on track. That's the, don't quit starting over. Right. Right. Just don't quit starting over. If you, if, you stop, if you haven't read your Bible in a month, don't quit starting over. Open it back up again. If you haven't exercised in a month, start over. Like, if you haven't been adjusted in a month, start over. Like, just, just don't quit starting over.